God's holy word, I challenge you to give to the Lord your life anew. My friend, make a choice, he waits for you. For this is the moment of truth. Be in the earth to walk with God, and He will be your dearest friend. Wherever you go, in everything you in restoration with God as your master and friend. Be in the earth to walk with God and He will be your dearest friend. Wherever you go in everything you Good morning everyone. Good morning everyone. Okay, uh, it's my honor and my, I mean it's my pleasure and honor this morning to stand here in front. Uh, this is this is my first time uh, involving in such programs, especially the I mean the big programs like this. Uh, yeah. My name is Pauline, my surname is Wanze, I'm from Manus. Uh, this year was my third year in Medang Teachers College, and I graduated. Uh, 2018 convention, I was supposed to attend the convention, but unfortunately I never make it, but I registered. And I'm thinking that I should attend it before I become a teacher. And I may not have chance to, you know, involve in such programs because whenever people attend uh, programs like this and when they go back, they used to tell, I mean, if he or she was your best friend and if he or she attended a program after he or she attended it, then I'm talking to you, then if, if, uh, you feel motivated, but unfortunately you're not part of it. 
So it's good to be part of God's program, and I'm happy to be here in his new Britain, Sonoma. Yeah. Uh, firstly, I'd like to welcome the guest speakers, and that is none other than uh, Dr. Leroy Elisha and Dr. Lauren Polly. And my second, uh, uh, secondly, the PNZ executives for making this uh, convention successful, and the delegates of its ATSAS that we are uh, we attend the convention. Uh, reflecting back, in uh, when you are. This year was a very challenging year, if we could look back. So I can say that to the very ones that we are right now in East New Britain, Sonoma, that uh, we attend a convention, you should be happy and you should know that you are really a hero. Because this year was a very struggle and unique year for every one of us. You feel like giving up and going back home, but thank God that you accept the call that you have to attend this convention because you know that there is something new that you have to learn and something that you have to carry on. And you have a story to tell and convince and experience that you can motivate the young ones that they are still growing and they'll become someone to in the future. Thanks uh, also including the media group and viewers online this morning. Uh, enjoy the program as we proceed on. Thank you, and that's all that brings us to the end of our welcome. Jesus is a key. 
Good morning, PNG Archer. It is a privilege and honor to be here. To have this convention. It's a day you and I, we will enjoy the call you have been here for a purpose. My name is Francis Yasakin, Bachelor of Ella students, the one word, doing my final year. As much as I would like to welcome you all, and we will continue and proceed into a word of prayer. Wherever you are sitting down, let us Submit ourselves to God for this very moment what we will hear from our two servants of God, Dr. Lauren Polly and Dr. Leroy Ilesa, what they have brought us will unite us mold us to be a new person this week. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we address you as Father because you have adopted us into your kingdom through the blood of your son Jesus. We humbly come to your cross to receive your word through reconciliation. And we want to transform into a new child. 
prepare ourselves to your kingdom. Lord, please help us to restore your words into our hearts. To make us different into your kingdom through the power of the Holy Spirit. We invite the Holy Spirit to save us and to guide us to hear your word this morning. As we Restore them into our hearts and prepare for your soon coming. This pray, we ask in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Now we are going to have a privilege to welcome Dr. Lori Polly to lead us with a word of God's kingdom, so that we can prepare ourselves. Let's welcome Dr. Leroy Poli. Testing. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Is it Massa? Massa and Isipik uh, Elsa for the welcome. Thank you for the press. Well, morning again, Ogata. Morning. What I'd like to do now is um, continue from where I left off and doc, my colleague, Dr. Leroy, left off last night. We are, we are trying to find ways to complement so that at least come end of the week, we, we will get to a place that we will call on each one of us to, recon uh, to come together, reconcile and restore ourselves to our creator and our maker. In our study yesterday, I, I took us into Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 2. It, it reads, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What, it's a powerful verse to, to the fact that God has created all of us in the beginning. And it was God who was in the action from the very start of this world. We also make mention of the fact that the world was void. It was without form. There was darkness. There was deep, you know. But amidst all of that, we continue to see the Holy Spirit of God hovering over the face of the earth. That's something that we need to know. For restoration and reconciliation to happen, we must go put God in his rightful place. God must become the centerpiece of everything that we do. Sometimes we live in a world where there's so much happening and we try to be the best that we want to, but in the course of what we want to do, we push God aside. How can there be reconciliation, restoration, when the God of heaven is not the centerpiece to everything? So th those are factors that are important 
for us to move in a direction where we can experience reconciliation and restoration. Last night I was listening to my colleague, Dr. Leroy Eliza. He was asking us for a resetting of our lives. He's wanting us to go back to Eden. And he suggested that there are factors that we need to take note of for us to be part of God's plan in reconciliation and restoring. He suggests to us to take care of the creation work that God is doing. Work is a good thing. If you, are, if you have been studying the lesson last week, lesson was on work. Work is a blessing to all of us. If, if we forgot about PNG Atsa for a little bit, and if I walk over to someone and say, I am Pastor Polly, all of you will know that I am a pastor. I work as a pastor. If I walk up to someone and I say, please, what's your name? And she will say, I am Dr. Somebody. I work at Port Mosby General Hospital. We want to associate our title with the work that we do. Because when we associate our title with the work that we do, there, there is some degree of status that comes into play, true or false. You are PNG Adza. I like the word. PNG Adventist, I like the word tertiary, it sets you apart. So when they say tertiary, you are a university student, you are a college student. It comes with some status. So, you know, those kind of things come. So, work is a blessing. Brother Leroy also mentioned marriage, something that we need to think about, you know. Sometimes when you are young, you don't want to talk about women or, uh, Men or women, you just want to play marble and play, you know, play balloon, or I don't know. You get this rubber, you know, those what? And then you jump or whatever. And as little kid, they used to say, play Scott, or I don't know. So when you talk, boys say, I will never go. I don't like boys. I want to be a girl forever. <laughs> Ah, you will laugh. You will laugh and you have some talk. <laughs> so we, 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 but we get to a place where we start to realize the value of marriage in our lives. All of us are here, boyfriend, girlfriend. If you are 21 and you don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend, something is wrong with you, true or false. You send them, you blow this little place, grown up, blow not a blind thing. So those kind of things comes into play. And it, the, these are things that God established. But we need to restore them to the place that God wants them to be. And then you talk about Sabbath, and, and that's something that we need to talk about. Even this week's lesson is on Sabbath. So it's like we are kind of, we, I didn't read the lesson to decide on what to say. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was working. So this morning, I'd like to uh, take us to Genesis chapter 1, and I'd like to try and see from verses 24 to 31. I will make it brief, because I, we still have one week to go. But before we go into our study, I'd like to invite all of us, please, to just pause where we are for, uh, for prayer. Our Father, we thank you again for the privilege of coming together as young people, as young Papua New Guineans, young college and university students who are here this morning. Maybe there are some of us who are doing grade 11, grade 12, with the intention of entering a test university. We came here so that we are motivated to be part of this group. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege. As we go into the study of your word, I'd like to invite your Holy Spirit. Please, Father, come to us. Please, Father, come into us. Please, Father, speak to us only from your word this morning. I decrease as you increase today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to pick up my reading this morning, Let Us Make. And if you have your Bible, I want us to 
go to Genesis chapter 1, as you would see on the screen, it's going from verse, to, I'm saying verses 26 to 31, but I'd like to pick up from verse 23 for context sake. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, let us, then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind, cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. In verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. Man in his own image and in the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. Then God, then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multi multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. If you were to look in verse 23, if you were to go back to verse 23, so the evening and the morning were the what? Were the fifth day. So if you, you conclude verse 23 with the fifth day, you go into verse 24, we are now into the sixth day. So if you were to say that first day is Sunday, you agree with me? Today I go and I buy all this diary at Theodis sometimes. Even I go to my phone and I try to look them up, you find out that the first day of the week is Monday. True or false? You see that in the, the way the calendar is arranged. I don't know whether that is intentional or maybe it is an attempt to downgrade what we say in the scripture, that I don't know. But if you were to look at the days, when we go into verse 24 of Genesis chapter one, we are actually talking about the sixth day. So in the sixth day, God created. I read again, then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind. So in verse 24, we, God created the creatures. And if you continue to go in verse 25, you will discover that God also created the beast in verse 25 of Genesis chapter one. So God said, God said, and the beast and all the animals came into being. But as you move into verse 26, as you move into verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image. So what you see in verse 26 is that when, if you go to Genesis chapter one, you will discover a number of things. There, there are, uh, please, I, I need to get used to this. If you go to verse three of Genesis chapter one, you find the event of the first day. So then God said, you go to verse 3, you find that God said, and you see that the event, God created something in the first day. 
You go to verse 6, again, God said. You go to verse 9, on the third day, God said something, and things happened. You go to verse 14, on the fourth day, God said again. And then you go to verse 20, it is the fifth day, and God said again. But when you come to verse, you come to verse 24 of Genesis chapter 1, which is the sixth day, something happened. God said animals and beasts were created. He just said them, he just said beasts come forth and they all came out running, you know. Same to Kakaruk, you come Kakaruk is busy come outside and I fly I mean, okay. Time I'm talking, sheep, sheep came out. But in verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1, you see that God let us make, instead of saying and happening, God chose to stoop down and become the potter who will mold man out of the dust of the earth. God made. And it is something that we need to take note of. There is a transition from God said, God said, and it happened to let us make when God came down to create man and woman in this world. Nice, yeah. Uh, I, I can em em emphasize this better. And then when you go down to... Uh, Chapter 2, verses 1, uh, verses 1 and 2, it talks about the seventh day, and that's where Sabbath began. Sabbath took place. But I'd like to emphasize only a few points, and I will sit down. In verse 27, let us all read together. So God, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Who was created in God's image in verse 27? In the beginning, God created who? You will talk, talk, you will talk, talk. You will sleep good all night. I want you to Facebook all night. Okay. So in verse 27, let's look at verse 27 again. So God created man in its own image. Sometimes when we are studying the word of God, many of us will stop there and we will conclude that man is man. Like a male or someone like Dr. Polly. And when we look into this part of the scripture, we get to a place that we want to think that God created man in its own image. And we stop there and we'll delete the remaining part of verse 27. But one thing that we need to note is that man were created, or man was created in God's image. We said, think, think, I'm talking about space, God, I'm maximum. Some new space, you know, look good too. Yeah, you, think. <laughs> we, you, you start to think about all these many things that God created man in his own image. And if God stopped, if there was a transition from just saying, and it happened to one who stops to create humankind, we need to rec recognize the value that God sees in all of us this morning. My wife works for K International in Port Mosby. And she's a gender specialist. So when they talk about gender, they will call my wife to go and talk about it. So she will go and conduct sessions. To, she runs around Papua New Guinea to conduct sessions on behalf of K International. And what she does is trying to remind all Papua New Guineans that women also were created in God's image. Women, what do you say? Because here in Papua New Guinea, I don't have time to put up some slides, 
but you would see in a lot of places in Papua New Guinea, men are so dominant. You go into PNG politics, how many people are there who are women? Huh? Do we have a woman member in parliament today? Okay, let's discuss now. Maybe I need to conduct a session on that. So, so, so why, why is it that men, women are not members of PNG politics? You will talk to all of me. Don't forget, I'm a preacher, but I'm a teacher too. And I don't enjoy teaching when my students are not responding to what I'm saying. So I'm saying, talk people are too. You will talk to me. What, what do you want? What? You understand what I'm saying. But here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 21, God created men and women in his image. In other words, everyone that walks on this planet Earth who are men and women are important in God's sight because they were created in his image. Why is it that in Papua New Guinea we make women feel like they are not important? Now, you are married to accept him and say, you know, important, huh? You know, I, I'm talking to all of us. I want PNG Archer to get to a place where we must listen to the message that God is telling us that men and women were created in his image. If you come into this program thinking that you are superior and that other person next to you is inferior, if you come into this convention thinking that I am man and I am better than that person next to me, because I am man and a, a, a woman next to me is not important. If you come into this convention with that kind of mindset, with that concept running through our mind, let's listen to what God is telling us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. All of us were created in what? God's image. Otoko sem, hey Miriam, mi bla manus tu, al manus am la ligli place, but that bla strong tu. So if you come to my house, if I go to my village, I'm planning to go probably in the next one week or two. After I'm done ya, I will go home. So so mi gol al manus. And if I go into my village and I go into a house, I, I will never go to the kitchen. And if I try to go and if people come to see, we want to see Dr. Polly, and they come and I'm in the kitchen cooking rice or peeling tapioca or scraping coconut, what will they tell me? All by talk, now got a Mary finish, now you go walking. Are I listening to what I'm saying or not? PNG Atza, you want restoration. You want reconciliation. You want to go away a new person. Answer my question. If you were going to a situation like this, Eating him. So I will go into my village and people will make like that. I will never cook anything. I will go in the morning, people will come with food. In the, <laughs> I will not know, but come with them food. Kai kai, huh? And they will try to give me the best food. That's why I got stroke, you know. <laughs> because I was eating and I forgot about my health, you know. So people will come with the best, you know. 
that's in my village. I used to be a pastor up in Western Islands Mission. I, I used to be the stewardship ministry or secretary for Western Islands Mission some, some years back. So if I go to Kandab, I, I went up and I went to Kandab, went to Ligam, went up to Kandab, you know those places. And I went to one little village, they call it Warakam. You go to that place, there's plenty of taro, really nice, bigger than all the best taro in Morobe province. They will cook the taro, they will come and give it to me, and they will bring a live chicken. I don't eat live chicken until I went to Western Islands Missing. That's like I know, so I put him in the stock feet no more. <laughs> so I, I went, they, they came and they said, uh, Pastor Polly, since you come, this is your meal. So all by give, they will give me taro, rice, you look all merry, but tan, tan, no one, all by put him. Some love all cooking oil no more. Do you think? They want to make it so sweet, so I must feel oil, <laughs> grease, no more, the rice, no guns. And they will come and give me one old chicken. They say, Pastor Polly, this is yours. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> People appreciate you, huh? and you don't do anything. And then we left Warakam and we came over to the district director's house at uh, Kandab Station. And the past district director actually killed a goat for me, you know. I, uh, me feeling was, uh, uh. I went to Lufa as well. I conducted a meeting at Lufa Station, Eastern Island. And after they did, they killed one old goat and they say, Dr. Polly, it's your food. Because I, so when I was pastoring at Kama, so they came and they, they brought those things. And uh, when the church members came, I told them, please make sure you take care of this. So they actually cut everything, all head blend, body, everything. And all mumu na come give me anything. So I told him, please you eat everything, anything that you want to live with me, you give it to me and I'll go and take it to my family in Goroka or things like that. But everywhere I go, maybe because I'm a pastor, maybe because I'm a doctor as well, so there's a lot of respect that is accorded to, to people. But when people do this, that to each one of us, there is a tendency in our heart where we can think that I am very important and in the course of what we are doing, we can look down on other people as well. But I'd like to remind each one of us that we are all created in what? In God's image. When God is seeing each one of us, he's not seeing a man, he's not seeing a woman, he's not seeing a university graduate, he's not seeing someone who's in the village only living off the east or a garden. God looks down and is seeing sons and daughters of himself. And that's what Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 tries to remind each one of us this morning. And I'd like us to go away. Please, if you come into this, if you want restoration, I'm talking about something that is very dear and something that is creeping, and if we are not very careful, it will destroy the church that we are living. I remember I went to U.S., and let me tell the story, and I'm looking at my time as well. 2008, I went to U.S. for studies. And when I went for studies, I, I need to find a job to do so that I can provide for my family in U.S. So when I was at Andrews, there are student jobs that are made available to everyone that were there. In fact, I was there for five years. 
So, so when we were there, I need to find work to do. So I applied for some jobs. And one job that they gave me was to work in the dining services. They were paying us about $8 an hour. Probably that should calculate to about 20 kina or 24 kina an hour. But when I went into that, there were a number of things you can cook, you can wash the dishes, and, and there are some whose job is to sweep and mop the floor before the next customer, next student comes into that to dine at the dining services. I'll give them the work here, work I'll give me a law. Time of the man walk finish and everyone is sitting the dining, all is closed. I, I will go in and sweep and mop the entire place. So, so I went and I, I used to do that. But there was this, I don't know whether she's uh, Mexican or she's from Brazil. And if you don't know women from Brazil, <laughs> now I want to make you laugh. Now you're laughing. <laughs> so she would come and she would look at me and she would say also, and there was time and she would come and I, when I'm doing something, she will come, come and do this. And when I'm still doing it, she will come, can you go and do that? And I'm like running here and there. And then my Papua New Guinea came up. Lord, please blow me, Mary, no, so sorry, me, thing. Me, that we start a place not come here. No, God, only Mary is walking me. Go them, go them, go them, you know. So my Papua New Guinea came up. My Manus came up. So the next day, I didn't come to work. I'm tired of women telling me what to do. At least you make us equal. You like down in me. Me, less you think. <laughs> so next day, I didn't go to work. And then she called. I was sitting there, but my wife decided to answer the phone. Mary, I'm fired here. Can you tell Lauren to get, get here right now? He, he needs to work, you know. No. Next day, me no go. Third day, me no go. Now, Rossi, me no work. Because my Papua New Guinea, my ego, my pride took over me. I applied for another job, and they'd make me the janitor, you think? They, they say the house as, uh, housing assistant, and that like, looks really good. So I'm like, an, uh, if there's an housing officer, I am the assistant. <laughs> but the job description is that I will sweep around the, dorm, uh, the, the apartments that we were there. So I remember I would sweep, I would sweep, sweep. And when people come, especially women are coming, I will go and hide, you know. <laughs> I will light and finish, and then I will start cleaning again. So I was asking the Lord, what is it that I will write for my doctoral dissertation? And a topic came up, and I wrote my dis doctoral dissertation on. And it's about seven root in God's church in Papua New Guinea. But God came, cut me, so that I can see the image of God in myself, and I can see it in others as well. Strong bear. If you come here, want this to see your image in God, praise the Lord. 
But if you want to see your image from the cultural perspective that see downplay others, you may need Lalusima. We need to ask the Lord to restore us. It happens to me, it can happen to you. So now I've, I've gotten to a place where I just want to do something for the Lord. If I don't have status, I don't care. But if I can lead someone to Jesus and they say, Will you, in Genesis 1, verse 27, I praise God for that. I think we need to get to a place that we allow God to uh, come. We are talking about we restore God, but maybe in the process of restoring God, let us allow for God to break down things that are hindrance to that restoration that we are here to rebuild and establish in our lives. I'd like to finish up by reminding each one of us, the reason why God created us in his image is for a few things. Next slide. In verse 28, God created Adam and Eve and God blessed them. That's something good. When God created us in his image, he will bless us. And only good things will happen to us. There are times where there will be struggles, but those are part of growing us so that we can experience the real Thing that God intends for each one of us. God is going to bless us. One of the things I like to remind us when God created men and women in, the, in his image is because he wants to bless each one of us. And I'm looking this morning into the face of men and young men and women who are here because God has blessed them. But I also see a situation that God one of the blessings that God can give us is that we are going to be fruitful and multiply. Nice, huh? We are not animals to multiply animals. We are not seeds to multiply plants and trees around. We are human beings. God has blessed us so that we can also multiply the people. Some of us are parents, huh? How many of us are parents sitting here, but you are in PNG? Uh, it's really nice. Because PNG Acha is not only for young people, it's for those who are studying in universities, okay? But one of the things that some of us experience is that time you big plan, my story is there, me find me yeah. I didn't ask for a girlfriend, I asked for a wife. God gave her to me. 2016, she passed on, she lived behind, she left behind with me two young girls. One of them just graduated last week from PAU. She's 22 years old. Another will go to Pomis next year to do his grade 11. And when she passed away, I, I remarried. I, my first wife was from Central, so when she passed away, I was growing old, so I decided to go back to Manus, ready to retire, I think. So I remarried another beautiful person from Manus, and uh, February 1, she went into labor, It was on a Sabbath. I was preaching at Gordon's SDA Church, you know. And I'm feeling all this la pain, Lord Mary's I feel him, yeah. You know, doctor, you know, story, no, yeah, yeah. So we went and I say, what are we, I have to Google to f how long it will take for labor before the, my son arrives. So, so we decided we, we'll go down and I'll preach. So I went to Gordon's and I preached, and I told the pastor, please, you pray for my wife. She is going through some situation right now. Very good situation. Huh? 
because her life was about to be born. So we went and uh, so I went to La Pasta. I went, so there was a PAU graduate, a nursing graduate from PAU. She was worshiping at uh, Gordon's Church. So she saw me and said, hey, Dr. Polly, are you going to? I said, please, you come here. Come. And come to me talking, Mrs. Blomie, I said, so you just read it. So my wife, we came, she got, we, she, she drove us to town, and then um, she went into an office and stayed there. I said, just stay there and let me know. If I'm the, in the middle of my sermon, I will still come down. So we went and I preached, and after, and while we, I was preaching, she was going through this labor and all of that. And then later we went to the hospital. We were thinking that my son would be born, will enter the world around the 1st of February, 2020. But he arrived about 1.35 a.m., 0.2020 this year. It's a blessing to be in a marriage relationship and be part of what God is telling us, be fruitful and multiply. And he's not doing it for the sake of just pleasure and whatever. He does it for a very good reason, and that is for stewardship over the creation that God has given each one of us. That's the book of Genesis. That's the ideal. That's why Dr. Leroy wants us to go back to Genesis. That's why the scripture wants us to go to Genesis. Because everything we do in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, is ideal. And it's restoration. It's blessing for each one of us. It is my prayer this morning. That you walk away reminding yourself that you are created in God's image. God didn't say it anywhere. You came into being. God stooped down. God made you. He took time and he created you in his, in his image. And I'm just praying that as we reflect on these Bible verses, that we can enjoy the blessing that God has planned out for each one of us. If you are not experiencing it, maybe this week is the time. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to over, you know, but the Holy Spirit is also promised that not only that he's going to over, but he's willing to come, with, stay with us, come within us, so that we can enjoy that restoration once again. May God bless. Amen.
Thank you, Master, for that beautiful song. I'd like to invite all of us to stand as we conclude our worship. Our Heavenly Father, it is our desire that Jesus, we want you in us, we want you with us, and pray that you can influence our lives better. Thank you, Lord, for creating us different from the plants, the birds, the animals, the bees, even the fish, and everything in this world. You, you, you stop to make us, because you want us, to, you made us in your image. Not only men, but men and women together. It's amazing how you created us with so much expectation. You blessed us. You want us to be fruitful and multiply. You also give us the responsibility to be good stewards over your creation. And if there is a place that you want us to know before we move into adulthood and start living our professional lives as Christians, it is now. Father, help us to see that all of us here today attending this program for this week are all created in God's image. Help us to love, treat, and even talk to each other as if we are valued, loved, like Jesus did for each one. Father, as we see value in each other and in ourselves, help us to go out into the community and help our community see that they are also valued and created in the image of God. Devil is working so hard every single day. 
He wants us to distort or even destroy the very image of God that is given to each one of us. Please, Father, use these young people, PNG Adja, to become the channel of change, a change that only emulates the image of God, His Son, Jesus, and the working presence of His Holy Spirit. Father, please accept us as I commit all of us to you once again. Not only for now, not only for today, but throughout our lives. Where we have failure, if we have abused our body, if we have abused others, we ask you, Father, to forgive us and truly forgive us as we dismiss this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, Papua New Guinea, and those of you who are watching from all over the world. Uh, good morning from Sonoma uh, Adventist College. And this morning, uh, we are grateful for the message from Dr. Polly, Pastor, uh, that was very inspiring. And indeed, we were created in the image of God, and God's ministry of reconciliation is also our ministry of reconciliation. So young people, uh, once again, I'd like to invite you all to invite as many people as you can to the PNG Atsa Facebook page so that we get as many young people as we can joining us live from Sonoma. Uh, after this, uh, we will go off uh, offline for 10 minutes, but we'd like to invite you again after 10 minutes so that this morning we'll have two very special uh, sessions. One from uh, Minister Willie Siso. Uh, he works with uh, uh, deaf people. Uh, he has a very special ministry. So we'd like to ask you to join us uh, as he presents what he has to present. And uh, we'll also have a leadership seminar by our, one of our guest speakers, Dr. Lauren Polly. And also, we would like to ask you to support us by praying for this PNC Atsa 18th Convention. Until then, join us again in 10 minutes time for the live streaming of our very special seminars for this morning. See you again. <laughs>